I greet you in the name of the risen Christ. It is good to be here worshiping with you this morning. We are going to step out of our Advent just a little bit and take time to celebrate the fact that there has been ministry happening in this building for 50 years now. And that is a tremendous, tremendous accomplishment, something we're excited to celebrate. So what you'll see in worship today is all of a lot of elements uh, pulled out of the consecration service from 50 years ago. They're not quite in the same order because our worship isn't quite in the same order. Since the consecration of this building, we have become a different denomination uh, even. And so uh, we're, we do things a little bit differently. But if you were here 50 years ago, you may recognize some of these words and the songs were pulled from that service. Um, except for one that's no longer in our hymnal. So uh, I'm looking for someone to tell me where to find that song because I've never heard it before. But you'll notice that as we go through worship, and I hope this truly is a time of celebration and we'll hear speakers later, and it should be a really wonderful day. And now I believe Bev Spencer has a couple of announcements for us. I gave these same two announcements a couple of weeks ago, but I want to make sure that you hear it. Behind Tom, would you step this way? Just Oh, either way. There is um, a flyer that tells about the United Methodist Women's uh, Christmas program tomorrow night. Uh, bring an angel uh, or another ornament if you'd like, and we'll be having food, and you'll be going home with a special ornament that Holly Searson always makes for us. And then the other thing is uh, I'm going to remind you already, even though it's not until April 18th of next year, that there will be another tasting bee. It'll be called Our Daily Food. And we're looking for recipes. And uh, Barb Wilcox has a list of recipes. If you're just really hard up and have given us all the recipes you have, she has some. So see her and talk to me if you have any questions. Thank you. And Bev, if I'm remembering this correctly, that will be 51 years. This will be the 51st, yes. Yes, so wonderful. Glad we can continue that wonderful event. And now, beloved, will you please stand and greet one another in the name of Christ Jesus. and connections happening and I would encourage each and every one of you to join us downstairs after worship for a special fellowship time. I hear there are appetizers and cake. Is that correct? I'm looking for, I, they must still be greeting. Appetizers and cake downstairs. I'm declaring that. And so I invite you to come downstairs and be in conversation and celebration and to see the beautiful pictures that were, have been posted showing the history of the church. And now, beloved, will you join me in a time of prayer? God of us all, we thank you so much that you have gathered us to this place to worship your holy name, to celebrate and prepare for the arrival of your son, and to celebrate the history of ministry in this building. Keep us mindful of the cloud of witnesses that have gone before us that make this day possible, but also help us to look forward to the future, to be mindful of our ministry and our call in this very moment, and to be obedient to your call that calls us forward 
in ministry here in West Branch. In Jesus' most holy name we pray. Amen.
<laughs> you need to stand either way. <laughs> all right, good morning. Good morning. My name is Nancy Slaw. You're all standing, so that's good. Um, join me in our call to worship. Let us join together in this prayer from the original consecration service. Almighty God, God, on whom we build our hopes for this life and that which is to come, visit, we beseech thee, with thy, with thy loving kindness, this our church. May it ever be a place of praise and honor to thy holy name. We give thee thanks for the careful and wise planning and good workmanship and honest labor and all the offerings of time and money that may be possible this building. May the walls of this church ever stand in strength and in beauty, and may the hearts of its people be fitly joined together into a living church that is built upon the foundation of the disciples, the apostles, and the prophets. May Jesus Christ ever be our Lord and Master. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing and join in the singing of our opening song, Holy, 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 number 64 in the United Methodist Hymnal. Shall 
You can find it in your bulletin. We gather in preparation, for, for good, good news is about to be proclaimed. We gather in expectation, for, for joy is about to break forth in our midst. We gather in celebration, for, for we are those people who have said yes to the major, yes to the one incarnate for others, yes to the wholeness of God. In preparation and expectation, let us celebrate. You can find the scripture reading Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 11, on page 603 in your Pew Bible. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins, they shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. Foreigners shall tend your land, so till your land and dress your vines. But you shall be called priests of the Lord. You shall be named ministers of our God. You shall enjoy the wealth of the nations, and in their riches you shall glory. Because their shame was double, and their dishonor was proclaimed as their lot. Therefore, for they shall possess a double portion. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense. I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, for as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown to spring up, so the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of God for the people of God. <coughs> Thanks to God. God. Uh, join us in singing The Church is One Foundation from the United Methodist Hymnal, number 545. Please stand as you are able. Yeah. 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. A man named John was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him everyone would believe in the light. He himself wasn't the light, but his mission was to testify concerning the light. (coughs) The true light that shines on all people was coming into the world. The light was in the world, and the world came into being through the light, but the world didn't recognize the light. The light came to his own people, and his own people didn't welcome him. But those who did welcome him, those who believed in his name, he authorized to become God's children, not born from blood or from human desire or passion, but born from God. The word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory, glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace and and truth. John testified about him crying out, this is the one of whom I said, he who comes after me is greater than me because he existed before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. As the law was given through Moses, so grace and truth came into being through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. God, the only son who is at the father's side, has made God known. The word of God for the people of God. God. The light, the word has come into the world and is coming again. And there is nothing so dark in the world or in us that is strong enough to overwhelm this light. The word has come and is coming into the world. The word will enter our hearts if we but allow it to happen. The word was with God in the beginning. The word is with God now. The word will be with God at the end of time. This word came to be with us, and we call him Jesus Christ. Christ, the anointed one, the holy one, the king. Messiah, the anointed one, the savior, the redeemer. And when this word made flesh began to teach in a synagogue, it was Isaiah 61, verse 1 through 2, that he declared fulfilled. The word, the light of the world, came with a message of healing, of release, of liberty, of sight. I declare to you today that the word, the light, is here right now. I declare to you today that the word is speaking healing, release, liberty, and sight over the world, even now. I declare to you today that if we are in this room, we have been called to be Christ's body here on earth. We are the continued incarnation of the word and the light until the word comes back to complete the unification of heaven and earth. I asked us all last week to begin preparing our hearts, uh, to begin preparing ourselves with as much time as we prepared for the holiday season. If you bake for an hour, you spend time with God for an hour. If you decorate or shop for an hour, you examine something about, we examine something about ourselves for an hour. How have you done? the last week. This was not solely for our own edification because nothing we do in this church is for solely our own edification. This was for an anointing of the spirit to be upon each and every one of us. Is our message and our work good news for the oppressed? Are we proclaiming release from prison of pain and sin? 
Are the blind recovering sight? And not just literal sight. Are people able to really see those that they've never seen before after we go to work? The light has come and is coming to the world. The darkness attempted to reject and overwhelm the light, and it will keep denying the light's presence. The light is supposed to still be in the, word, in the world, but the word has given this to us as our job. We should expect opposition and a denial by the darkness when we go to work. But we remember that we walk in the light and the darkness cannot overcome us. Amen? Amen. I invite you to turn in your hymnal to page 882. And please join with me in reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We've come now to our time of prayer, so I invite you to join me in the presence of God. Loving and faithful God, we do thank you for this season, this time to prepare our hearts to once again be the light in the world. We thank you for the work that you have done in our lives that enables us to serve your name. And we just ask for that work to continue. God, we confess to you those times when we have allowed the darkness to overwhelm us. When instead of hope and peace, we have felt nothing but despair when we have felt at war with ourselves and at war with those around us. Forgive us, we pray, and restore your hope and your peace within our hearts. God, we each have loved ones that we carry on our hearts those who have experienced loss recently, those who are hurting physically, emotionally, mentally, those who cannot find their way to you. God, we pray for them. We pray for your presence to fall upon them, to embrace them, to fill them up with your love. we thank you for this church for the people throughout history who have gathered here in this place for the people throughout history who have called themselves Methodists here in West Branch we thank you for the work that has been accomplished by our brothers and sisters in Christ. And God, we ask for your Holy Spirit to continue to fill our hearts that we would be kingdom builders here in this place. 
that we would remember the foundation we're built upon, but that we would be looking forward to the call that you have for us. God, I know that I cannot pray the prayer of all our hearts gathered here in this place, and so I ask now that our hearts would be open to speak to you and to hear from you. with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful, wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow straight. joy to continue to be doing work in this building that has so much history and on this property that has so much history for this church. And we recognize that as our hearts are stirred to generosity by the Holy Spirit this morning, that is what we're doing is we're investing in the future of the ministry and the present reality of the ministry happening here in this place that we love so much. Will the ushers please come forward to receive this morning's offering?
speakers that they have asked that plan this event for us and we'll share in our liturgy after they're done speaking but they're going to share a little bit about the history the experiences that they've had here and really help us celebrate our time of consecration thank you first i want to thank you all for coming to help us celebrate the 50th anniversary of the building of our church. In 1958, the congregation voted to build a new church, but they couldn't agree on a location and didn't have the funds. So the building was delayed until September 1966, when they decided to burn the old church down and the money was available. The cost was $155,000. Several of us often drove to other churches to see how they were built. Our worship service was at the Catholic Church while ours was being built. I just got a note saying that Al and Connie were the first ones married in this new church. <laughs> the cornerstone laying service was on September the 3rd, 1967. The Masons were a big part of the ceremony and Clarence Crew was among them. The consecration service was held on December the 3rd, 1967. How I remember the many UMW dinners. Back then it was called WSCS. And we served Hawkeye football dinners at the, uh, when it was a game day and the proceeds went towards the new building. How fortunate we were to have our kids in church every Sunday and involved in so many events, thanks to Jim Mays and his leadership with the youth. The Thomases, the Spencers, and the Ellisons, and other church families did barbecues, snow sliding parties. We often had potlucks, Halloween parties, etc. Church and church friends together. What good times. <clears throat> uh, we also just received a, a note from Reverend Paulus. He said he sent his regrets for not being able to attend the celebration as they will be in Wisconsin for a family Christmas. But he said he has such wonderful memories of his nine years with the church. He loved the openness and the friendliness of the congregation and the public access to our fellowship hall. We so appreciate the ministers, the staff, the leaders in many capacities who served this church over the years. Would you please stand if you were here 50 years ago? If you were a member 50 years ago, would you stand? They, they also have a tag with a little gold on it that does show that they were members 50 years ago. So we appreciate it. Thanks so much. And I would like you to go downstairs for fellowship and greet them. There's lots of uh, information down there on the table, hanging up different places, so uh, browse around. 
God bless you one and all. Now let's hear from Audrey Cofold, Dale Thomas, and Ruth Blair. <clears throat> oh, sorry. <laughs> My father, L. C. Rummels, was very active in the Methodist Church, serving on the board of St. Luke's Hospital in Cedar Rapids, and was also a delegate at a national Methodist conference held in California. So you see, I have a long history. I was born on a farm at the Mile Corner south of town. We lived there for five years before moving back into town. And after moving around in town, we finally came to an old house just to the north of the church. My parents moved the old house to the east of that lot, and then they built a new house next to the church, which still stands today and John and I were married in that house in 52. I've been a member of this church since I was born and put on the cradle roll. And all my children and grandchildren were confirmed here. We've had many marriages and many baptisms in, in our family. And I've held several jobs, including organist on the old organ in the old church. UMW officer and Sunday school teacher. My church and its many activities are a big part of my life now, as they have been since I was born. Bricks and mortar, but you know, you can guess what I'm gonna talk about. <laughs> I, when I looked for records of when I started to direct the choir, they're unavailable. I did see a bulletin that said I was directing the youth choir in 1957, and it says I started in the adult choir in 1959. It would have been late in the year. So next year I will head into my 60th year as choir director, or as adult choir director. And uh, of all my activities, playing in bands, playing on TV, recording, of all those things, I still come back to this choir. And uh, in this building, the choir has had, we've had many highlights. I suppose our, our biggest choir, the most attendance, was back in the 70s with names like uh, Perry and Martha White, uh, Sally Dexter, uh, Ethel. Uh, Doug and Ethel Reynolds, maybe you remember those. The Spencers were here back in those days. And uh, Jim Mays, Bob and Jane Hobart, Peg Anderson. Those are the years when we had 20 and 23 and 24 singers every Sunday. And then, of course, we also had the youth choir that I directed feeding into it. Every time they got into eighth grade, they became members of the adult choir. Besides choir, this building held Fifth Sunday Sings where we invite groups from other churches to come and sing and entertain. We had Ferris family concerts, community choir cantatas, Christmas, Easter, praise cantata, and about 15 annual appearances of the Bandera Boys doing their Dixie Gospel every fall. We had the Branches Quartet. Uh, Mark. Mark Sean Weber, Ed Spencer, Jim Mays, and myself. We even took a tour to Denver, stopping in churches in Kansas and Colorado for gas money. <laughs> and we, in our uh, blended service, we also had a little praise band. Uh, Scott Patrick would play the drums, and uh, Amanda Mather would play the bass, and I would play guitar or keyboards. But through it all, we knew that Thursday night was where you belong which is a song title. We sing every Sunday, except for maybe one month a year where we give them a little vacation. And uh, when I go around to other churches, whether I'm singing at a funeral or just strike up a conversation with a church musician, most of the time I hear, oh, I say, how does the choir do? And I, they'll say, well, we sing monthly. 
about once a month. Not always, but uh, that has always impressed me. We, we have a subscription to Discover Worship. That's where we get a lot of our music. And there's a three-page blog on the use, of purpose, use and purpose of choirs and praise bands. I'm not going to read the thing, but I, there's, I'm going to lift a couple, just a couple thoughts here. Is the verdict final? Are church choirs going the way of pay phones and blockbuster video stores? The evidence seems convincing. From 1998 to 2012, 21% of evangelical churches and 40% of mainline churches stopped using choirs regularly in worship. Hmm. That said, 200,000 evangelicals and mainline Protestant churches in North America 35% of evangelical congregations and 37% of mainline churches do continue to use church choirs. Still a lot of folks believe that in the uh, importance of the church choir. Choirs are biblical. Choirs encourage excellence in worship. Choirs celebrate a human voice. Choirs can inspire and lead worship. Choirs can be redemptive communities. We are a redemptive community. <laughs> A healthy choir affirms its membership. A choir is the place where you belong, where you are missed when you're not there. Like the fabled bar in the TV show, Cheers, the choir is a place where everyone knows your name. And if you might, I'm going to end now. You probably noticed that this week was also the 50th anniversary of the Carol Burnett show. She started in the uh, 19th. What? 67? Yeah, 67. So, uh, I will end with this. I'm so glad we had this time together. I would pull on my ear, but I've been pulling their ears for 50 years. <laughs> I don't know whether to pull on my ear. I'm Ruth Blair, and I come to you to speak as a relative newcomer to this congregation. Uh, Jim and I have been here just over four years, and perhaps just as significant, we do not live in West Branch. We live near Iowa City. <coughs> Fifty years ago, when this building was being built for worship and Christian nurture, I would have been a child, wondering about becoming a teen, and not even living in Iowa. In my time here, I've appreciated this building and the ways that it's been flexible to make various ministries work. Uh, those 50 years ago may never have imagined how differently uh, the space would be used on Wednesday evening with the children and youth. And this congregation has made continued accessibility a priority with the remodeled bathrooms and the elevator addition. Well done, good and faithful servants, those that are here today unable to be with us and those that have gone on to the church triumphant. The desk I use here at the church was once used by Reverend Alexis and she taped a saying to the top. It must have meant a lot to her because it is taped down quite securely. <laughs> it's still there. It says, fruitfulness is the consequence of an obedient persistence in the same direction for the duration of a lifetime. Let's hear that again. Faithfulness is the consequence of obedient persistence in the same direction for the duration of a lifetime. Let me reflect on that a little bit. I can easily guess that back when I heard this discussion may have started in 1958, there was probably excitement and passion as such these new plans were discussed. The project may have seemed overwhelming, and I don't doubt there were a few that worried there undoubtedly was excitement as the money was raised and a dream looked closer to reality. However, there may have been differing opinions. As soon as you get two people together, 
that can happen. There was the bittersweet loss of the old building that had been important and shaped so many people's memory. But this congregation chose faithfulness in the same direction and continued ministry. As a newcomer who was but a child when these discussions happened, living in another state at a church that wasn't even United Methodist, it wasn't even Methodist, I'm glad that this congregation trusted in the good work of Jesus Christ and went forward in faithful obedience in one direction. As we celebrate the past accomplishments, may we keep facing in the direction that Jesus calls us. And may the Lord's good work continue through this congregation for another 50 years and beyond. Amen. I'd like to finish with this reading by Reverend Katmeyer. He was the local pastor at that time, titled Appreciation. We come this day to consecrate our new church building because of your faithfulness, your loyalty, and the spirit of this congregation, because of your time and money so willingly given, it has made our new church a reality. The building committee spent unnumbered hours in discussion and decisions. Every member made his own unique contribution. In the end, we are blessed with this beautiful church building. However, this is not the end, but rather the place where we give of ourselves with the help of God to make a building into a Christian church. Thank you. Now, I'm glad we didn't miss that. That was wonderful. Please stand as you are able and join me in the Remembering Our Building Consecration. You can find it in your bulletin. To the glory of God the Father, who has called us by his grace, to the honor of his Son, who loved us and gave himself for us, to the praise of the Holy Spirit, who illum illumines and sanctifies us, we, we consecrate this house for the worship of God in prayer and praise, for the preaching of the everlasting gospel, for the celebration of the holy sacraments. We, we consecrate this house. house. For the comfort of all who mourn, for the strength of those who are tempted, for the light to those who seek the way. We, we consecrate, consecrate this house. house. For hallowing of family, for teaching and guiding the young, for the perfecting of the saints. We, we consecrate, consecrate this house. For conversion of sinners, for the promotion of, the, of righteousness, for the extension of the kingdom of God. We, we consecrate, consecrate this house. house. To the unity of the faith in the bond of Christian kinship, in charity and goodwill to all. We, we consecrate, consecrate this house. house. In gratitude for the labors of all who love and serve this church, in loving remembrance of those who have finished their course, and in the hope of blessed immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. We, we consecrate this house. We, we now, the people of this church and congregation, composite a great cloud of witness, grateful for our heritage, sensible sacrifice of our fathers and mothers in the faith, confessing that apart from us, their work cannot be made perfect do dedicate ourselves anew to the worship and service of Almighty God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please remain standing and join in singing our closing song, number 577, God of Grace and God of Glory, found in the United Methodist Hymnal. We will sing the first and last verse. <coughs>
As we come to the close of our service, I would like to extend an invitation to each and every one of you. Believe it or not, we're about two weeks, literally, not about, we are two weeks from Christmas Eve. Our services this year, we will have a service at 9.30 a.m. That will be a traditional Christmas Eve service featuring the choir. A 5.30 service of nine lessons and carols featuring our refuge band and some special music by various youth in the church. The youth will also be reading the scripture. And at 11 p.m., we'll have another traditional Christmas Eve service. 9.30 and 11 p.m. will be the exact same service. So you are invited to come to one, to come to all, to come however you feel led and celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ with us. And now, beloved, my prayer for all of us is that we would stand firm on the foundation that has been built up for us by so many saints, but that we would look forward to the call that God has and that we would be the embodiment of the light in the world. Go forth in the name and power of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the indwelling Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us close by singing, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Go tell it on the mountain.